All right, so this lesson is 6.4 in your textbooks. And, of course, your textbook is Foundations of Math 12 by Nelson. And the title of this particular lesson is Modeling Data with a Curve of Best Fit. Okay, so uh, in 6.3, we modeled data with a line of best fit. And so we are going to choose one of the other two types of functions that we've studied this chapter. First one is a line. So if we have points, that's the one we just did, right? That is a line of best fit. The next type would be if you had something like this, you had points like this, what might be a good choice for this one? Okay, a curve, not a straight line, yes. What kind of curve or what kind of function? Okay, parabola, which is a quadratic function, yeah. You could fit a really nice curve of best fit, that's in the shape of a parabola, right through those points. That'd be beautiful. Okay? And the third one we're going to look at, what happens if your data points, okay, look something like this? Hmm. That's a bit trickier. You might think, hey, I could do a line. Yeah, there's a bit of a right there. Not good. Uh, parabola. Sure, parabola fits really nice uh, here, but mm, 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 not over there. Cubic function. Hey, I heard it. I heard it. I heard it. So a cubic function might look like this, and that is B E A U T I F U L. Right there. Okay. Now you really only think that's beautiful if you're a math teacher. I get that. Anyways, so these are the three sort of curves we're going to try and force into the data, okay? So the data that we're going to plot, you have to kind of decide, if this, does this look like maybe it's in the general shape of a parabola, or is it in the general shape of a cubic function or a line, okay? So, let's get to an example. Uh, now, in your textbook, there is a chart on page 416. Okay, check out this chart on page 416. Here it is. I'll put it over here. Now, what I need you guys to do is I need you to take a couple minutes in your calculator. I need you to input this data into your calculator. Now, remember what we do here on this calculator. Do not throw that calculator. We do on, on, then we do stat, and then we do it. Are you quite finished? Yeah. Okay. And then we do edit. And now look, you may have lists already filled up in one, two, whatever. Clear them if you want or move to another list. Okay? So I took the time ahead and put these in already. So I want to see if you guys get the same stuff. So the X value, whichever list you're going to put that in, is the years after 1979. And yes, there are two columns, so make that one big long list, okay? You see? This is the X right here, and then all the way down to here. So all of these numbers put in your list one, or your first list that you're going to draw your X values from. And then the other one is the Y values, okay? These ones over here are the Y values, okay? Take a minute to do that. And in case you're wondering, I'll leave this up on the board. This is a good window for you to set here. Okay, because remember, this is the X value, these are the X values right here, and this is the Y down here. Okay, the other thing that you might want to remember here is you need to turn your stat plot on. So either the first one or the second or the third, whichever one. I did the second one, okay? You can do whichever one you want, but it's got to be on. Well, whatever. I mean, for me, it has three and four because I did these lists in three and four. So if you did in one and two, just turn a plot, one of the plots on, then skip down here, and then put in your whichever list is your X is this one, and whichever list is your Y, okay? And then if you make sure you have that plot on, 
and your windows are set somewhat like this, then once you graph it, you should have this right here. So when you have this, now what does this look like? Does it look like a line, a parabola, or a cubic function? Yeah, it looks like a cubic function. So what we're going to do then is we're going to head to stat over to calc. And then here's line reg, here's quad reg, here's cubic reg. That is cubic regression. So you tell your calculator, hey, cubic regression. And then you tell it which lists you want it to draw from. Because it's going to take a look at the data. And then it'll come up with an equation for you. Well, you can do L1 and L2. I did mine in L3, comma, L4. So mine, my data is in L3 and L4. See, look at, see stat, enter. See, I did mine in L3 and L4. See that? Okay, so now I go and I hit enter. Look at it, it's thinking. Ooh, thinking. Wow. Check this out. This is a beautiful thing. It gives you the general form of the equation, and it gives you each parameter, A, B, C, and D, each coefficient. All right, so what you do now, yeah. All right, so just, just for one second here, here's the main screen. Do you see how A is positive? If A is positive, then that's a positive there. If B is negative, then it turns into a subtraction. Yeah, okay. So that's why I did a uh, minus here. Plus there and a plus there, because those ones are positive. So you fill in that graph from that format. Oops. Right here. And then you hit graph, and that's <laughs> what you should see. There's your line of regression. Okay, so just to conclude here, guys, I'll just review this real quickly here on the video. Um, if you want to find out what year after 1979, this is one of the questions, what year after 1979 is the gas price 56? So you think it would be somewhere in here. Oh, maybe not, because look at it, it drops down to 54. Whoa, maybe it's over here, I don't know. So what you want to do, and this is the reason why we're doing all this, to go back to the graph, and so you have this graph. Now this line that I graphed here, that is the Y value of 56.0. And that's the Y value, that's the gas price. And so what you do is you graph this line as well, and then you find the intersection point, or you can just kind of guess the intersection point. Hit the trace button, hit your up arrow until you get to your curve. And then you see, you just kind of try and find as close as you can to the intersection point, which look at this, y is 56.01 and x is 16.478 or roughly you would say to the answer to this question the gas price is 56 uh, cents approximately 16 and a half years after 1979. So that's how you would answer that question. Okay. Now you don't need the second line, really, and uh, I won't, I don't know if I'll teach you how to calculate the intersection point per se. I mean, it's not that hard. I think, you know, you guys get it. But if you just wanted to trace your um, line around until you get to 56, that's cool too. Okay? So intersection will be for another lesson.